Hey guys, what is going on and welcome to another episode of Trapped MC. Guys, this is episode 81 of our series. Stoked to be able to just be continuing this series. We're on episode 81. We're four-fifths of the way to episode 100. I'm just saying that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool stuff. Um, ooh. So, in I was recording the introduction to this same video before this, and I, I was really debating on, on this topic that I wanted to talk to you guys about. And um, while debating that topic, I realized I have a headset. I have a headset that it might work, but if it doesn't work, I can't return it. You know what that means? It means there's an opportunity to give this headset away, possibly. There's nothing guaranteed yet, but I want you guys to comment down below, do a headset giveaway so that if I forget that I recorded this, that I'll remember like, oh, there's people that want me to do that headset giveaway. So be sure to comment down below, do a headset giveaway if you're interested in this Turtle Beach Stealth 600 headset. It's made for Xbox, but it also works for PC. Uh, there's no guarantees that I'm gonna give it away, but if I can't get it to work the way I want to, if it's not better than this headset currently, then I'll go ahead and simply, my, like it's a likely chance I'll give it away. I just had this idea a few minutes ago, and I think that's a great way for me to possibly give back to you guys. Um, it's I bought it for like 80 bucks, but how it worked was I returned my Wii. I returned my Wii, um, you know, the, the Wii console from back in the day. I returned that. I could either choose like a $50 in-store GameStop credit or a $75, sorry, I could choose the $75 in-store credit or a $50 just cash credit. And I chose the $75 thing. And I, if I were to do it again, I would just get the 50 bucks and move on. But I didn't, and I can't take it back now. Like I, you know, I, you know, it's over for that. So I have the, this headset, and if it doesn't work for me, and, and I don't want it, then I want it to go to to good use somewhere. So if you want to get this headset, basically, I'm gonna. I, if there's no guarantees that I'm gonna do the giveaway, right? But if you guys are interested, I wanna see how many people are interested in a potential giveaway. And I, I don't know how I would structure the giveaway. It would be free to enter, you'd get one entry. It would probably be a YouTube comment or something. But are you guys interested in that? Comment down below, give, do a headset giveaway, and we'll, we'll take it from there. Uh, I'll see the interest level, and we'll, we'll see uh, what we can do there. So uh, let me know, yeah. so. Basically, I'm just really torn on whether to to do kind of like uh, this topic that I wanted to talk about today. Like, the topic I was debating on talking about was the sermon from today's gathering at church. And there's a few reasons why I wanted to do this, but there's also a few reasons why I don't. The reason why I do is because... It'd be a great way for me, selfishly, to remember the message and to kind of walk through it again. And it'd be a good way for me to spend time kind of comprehending and understanding what was said and to di just digest it. So there's that aspect. There's another benefit of, you know, sharing it is a great way to spread, you know, practical ways of, you know, of doing this topic that I haven't talked about yet, but it could be beneficial for you guys. So th there's definitely benefits for all of us in me sharing. Um, what's holding me back is that I'm just not sure. I have doubts. Like, do I, like, some some of the doubts are, I can immediately trump. Like, like, well, am I, like, am I qualified to share this message? Like, like, oh, like, first of all, I wanna talk about this in itself. If you are a believer in Jesus, you are instantly qualified via the Holy Spirit to share your personal testimony of knowing Jesus and how Jesus has changed your life. So this is kind of reassuring me that, yes, I am qualified in that sense, regardless of if I even heard the sermon or, or not. If I just had some notes on what I'm talking about, I can, you know, I have, you know, the wisdom and discernment to be able to share what, um, 
my thoughts are on that. And yeah, what I'm trying to say is I, I don't think I should let these doubts hold me back from sharing because this could benefit you and me and everyone who watches this video. So I think I'm going to do it. I think we're going we're gonna to briefly talk about this. Um, I don't typically do this with like notes and stuff, but basically the sermon was about like practical ways to like seek God's will, like whatever, whatever God wants for us, like how do we discern like what he really wants for us? Like, how do we know what God wants for, for us? Because God is good and God is in control. Biblically, that's what, that's who God is. He's sovereign, which means he's in control. And God is a good God. A big counter argument to God is a good God is that why does so many, why do so many bad things in this world happen? The quickest answer is that God gave us free will. God gave us free will, which means we are on this earth and we can do what we want to do. We can make our own choices. That doesn't mean the choices we make are good choices. But we live in a broken world and God gave us free will, you know? But anyways, back to this topic. What are some practical ways that we can figure out what, what the heck God wants for us? You know, what God's plans are for us. There's six things, and I'm just going to run through them. Um, the first one is be faithful in your waiting. So what that means is like, you know, God is not just going to reveal everything to us at, like all at once. God is going to, you know, he could reveal to you very quickly something that's happening in your life or something that you're stressed about. He, he might reveal it very quickly to you, like a solution or a way to eliminate that suffering um, that you're currently struggling with. But God might also take a while to reveal that information to you. And we must faithfully wait. We must be faithful in our waiting. Second is to surround yourself with a Christian community. Um, by the way, I'm, I'm referencing this. This is all based on Acts chapter 1, verses like 10 through 25-ish. So just a heads up on that. <clears throat> I think it's like 12 through 25 or something like that. Anyways, surrounding yourself with a Christian community is a great way to, to help you wait, to help you stay positive even when things don't seem so positive. So, yeah. Um, another thing, be devoted to the Lord in prayer. When we pray, we have in we we have direct communication with our Creator, and like we have direct communication when we pray to the to to God who who loves us more than anyone else in this world could ever love us. So when we pray, you know, God cares. God cares about what you're going through. But when we pray, you know, let me clarify. God cares about what you're going through regardless of whether you pray or not. But when you pray to him, it acknowledges that you care about your relationship with the Lord. And you're going to him. And you're seeking. You're, you're acknowledging his presence. You're acknowledging that, you know, prayer, you know, prayer is good. Prayer, prayer is good. Man, there's so many subtopics I could go off into based on this one discussion, but we got to keep moving forward. Um, obviously, there's with that, you know, there, there's some prayer that's more, more um, true than others. There's there's some prayer that's more genuine than other prayers. 
it's important to pray regardless of the circumstances, regardless of things, if things are good or bad. It's, it's still good to pray in both situations. It's good to know that in both situations, whether you're thanking God or whether you're asking God or whether you're telling God or whether you're uh, concerned and just going to God, like it's important to just tell him how you're feeling and to be genuine, but also to understand that he is in control of your life. He is in control. You know? Yeah. I'll, I'll move on. Um, I wrote this down. Prayer is not a lack of confidence in the Lord. Prayer is the exercise of confidence in the Lord. Do you ever get that feeling that when you pray, like you're not good enough and you're just not strong enough to deal with things on your own? You feel like you lack confidence in your in yourself or, or even you lack confidence in the Lord. You, you feel like prayer means it shows weakness have you ever have you guys ever felt that way i want to encourage you by saying that i needed to hear this from my pastor today you know prayer is the exercise of confidence in the lord when you pray genuinely you are showing god like god i trust you i am confident that you exist and not only do you exist but you are a good and sovereign god you are in control so when you pray you're exercising your, your confidence in the lord Next up, number four, be informed by the scriptures. It's, it's you know, you have to know what the scriptures say. And it, this does not just mean reading the Bible. This means going to church and learning more um, from your community of Christians. Um, this means going to missional communities or just communities within your church that are, like, smaller and you're able to really focus on, on scriptures and, you know, by... But studying scripture does not just mean reading it. It means actively making it part of your life through church, through communities, within your church. Um, yeah, so just it's important to know scripture. Number five, apply godly wisdom. This one's really interesting because it's like, it's like making adjustments to your life based on your circumstances that pertain to the will of God. So, like, for example, there was a pastor who was preaching at a really well-known church for 20 years. Or, no, he was, he was teaching seminary. My apologies. He was teaching seminary for 20 years at a really well-established seminary school. And then, you know, his, his wife was having some health problems, and ultimately he decided to... Um, to move to a different seminary school that was less prestigious, less well-known, he was going to get paid less, etc. He did that because his wife needed to um, get, uh, basically, they were living in Chicago. They needed to live in a warmer climate, so he made the adjustment, and they both went to Phoenix and moved there to be in a warmer climate to help uh, you know, he was able to continue his his uh, his teachings there, while also seeking out the best for his family. That's what godly wisdom is. It's like making proper adjustments to where you're you're still glorifying God with what you're doing, but you're also practically like making sure your family is well, is taken care of. You know, that's kind of an example of like. You know, that guy is still able to fill, fulfill his mission of teaching seminary school. Sure, it's not the highly prestigious school. He's not making as much now, but he's looking out for his family. And that's godly wisdom. And number six, trust God's guidance. It's important to understand that, you know, there's the decisions we make in our lives... We don't have to fear like, oh no, what if I made the wrong decision? What if God's plans can't be fulfilled now that I made this decision? I've been there. But the decisions you make will not determine if God is able to fulfill the goals and aspirations that you have in your life. So it's important to understand, like, 
like God is not limited to the decisions that you make. You know, that's a big thing. Like, no, he is in much greater control than that. He is in infinitely in more control than what I just described. So don't fear about making the wrong decision. Just trust God's guidance. Use that godly wisdom. Surround yourself with Christians. Be faithful while you wait. And pray about it. You know? So these are things that I learned today, and they were really helpful for me to just go over right now for myself. Like, selfishly, it really helped me. If you're still watching, I hope it. I hope these things helped you have a different perspective on things. And I really appreciate your guys' time. So, guys, with that being said, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed me mining on Trapped MC. If you're interested in playing on this server, the IP is trappedmc.com. And, um, yeah, join me on this server. Um, with that being said, guys, that's going to wrap it up. I will see you in the next video. Take care and peace.